grazie per aver accettato. Questo è un privilegio per me poterla intervistare. Allora, una cosa che mi ha colpito proprio all'inizio del libro è che lei si rivolge ai suoi lettori subito, immediatamente, puntualizzando una cosa. Accettate ciò che scrivo solo se sentite che è vero per voi. Ed è un atto di onestà intellettuale anche inusuale per uno scrittore. Perché ha scelto di mettere il lettore diciamo di fronte alle proprie responsabilità? I always feel that it's very easy to come up with ideas. Write a book. But sometimes we don't understand that person that who is reading the book. Does it make sense to them? Because if it doesn't make sense, it is our responsibility that if something doesn't make sense, we shouldn't accept it. And the problem I see with the world is they simply accept it. You look at the internet, it's full of lies. You look at so many of the exchanges that happen on Facebook, of Twitter, and so much misinformation is exchanged. And people are just opening their mouths and allowing themselves to swallow this. I want people to engage their brain, their heart, and then and only then accept it if it makes sense to them. Perché oggi si accetta così facilmente tutto? Che cosa è accaduto? Because this is how we have been trained since we were little babies. Open your, open your mind to this and just eat it. You know, and so many institutions that really should be causing us to think. Think about the consequences of all the things that we do. There are people who still don't believe that the earth is round. <laughs> it is unbelievable. And they really are into it, that earth is not round. That earth is flat. So they're not thinking for themselves. It's just open, open your mind and here it comes. And that's no way to live in this life. You are responsible for what you think about. You are responsible what thoughts you act on. You are the captain of your ship. And if you find your ship on some rocks, please don't blame it on other people. You did it. And it has to be as simple as that. C'è un altro passaggio, però sempre all'inizio del libro, diciamo che considererei propedeutico nei confronti del lettore, prima della lettura. Quando lei in, in un certo senso gli avverte che per arrivare alla chiarezza e per arrivare alla gioia è necessario il lavoro. Quindi 
Il suo percorso richiede un impegno costante, questo è il messaggio principale. If you are not committed to it, Se non sei impegnato in questa cosa, you can buy a diamond mine. Puoi, puoi comprare una miniera di diamanti. But if you don't dig, ma se non scavi, you won't get any diamonds. Non troverai nessun diamante. You can have a lot of gold in a river. Puoi avere tanto oro in un fiume. But if you don't pan for it, ma se non lo passi la sedaccio, you're not going to get it. Non lo terrai. And the joy and the clarity are things you need to feel. Not talk about. Feel. And the only way you can feel is if you dig into yourself. You are a mind. It, you, if you don't apply yourself to it, you will get nothing from it. Nel libro c'è un passaggio che lei, che lei dedica alla sua biografia familiare, in particolar modo a quello che ha rappresentato anche per lei la figura di suo padre. In questo percorso verso la pace, che ruolo hanno le, le famiglie in generale, le nostre famiglie? Che ruolo possono giocare? They can be powerful allies. Possono essere dei potenti alleati. Or they can be powerful enemies. Potenti nemici. And it would be nice if they could be powerful allies. Sarebbe bello se potessero essere potenti alleati. Because the march to peace. Perché la marcia verso la pace. Is very strange. È molto strana. It's coming home. È ritornare a casa. It's not going away from home. Non è It's coming home to you. When we are at home, we go home to sleep, we go home to eat, we go home to rest. For anything important that we have to do, we leave the home. But this time, if you want peace in your life, it is to come home. And you are the home. As many allies you can have on this journey, the better. Because there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to understand what are you doing. So you need allies. And family should be your ally if you can have it that way. Allargando il, diciamo, il nostro ragionamento alla, alla collettività, viviamo in, noi viviamo in una fase storica, probabilmente dove certe caratteristiche probabilmente sono anche determinate dall'uso costante dei, dei social media dove c'è uno spiccato soggettivismo che è una forma sì, estrema di individualismo quanto ostacola questa situazione il processo di conoscenza di noi stessi? Che per, che per lei ovviamente è fondamentale. Se non riesci a socializzare con te stesso, ma riesci a socializzare con tutti gli altri, hai un problema. Hai un problema. Hai un problema. E problem. questo è il mio problema. If you like socializing with other people, Se ti piace con gli altri, the question is, are you trying to fill something that is a hole in your life? Is this what happens when you know everybody else but you don't know yourself? Because people who seem to know themselves 
don't care. If they're okay if they're alone. And they're fine if they're with 100,000 people. But it seems right now the way the social media is, the situation with social media is, is that they're only fine with the 100,000. <laughs> and not with themselves. <laughs> and it should be both. <laughs> At least. E può rappresentare il principale nemico, chiamiamolo così, proprio del, 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 suo, del suo percorso e del suo processo di conoscenza che ci invita a fare verso noi stessi perché. Can this really be an enemy of sorts for against your process, the process where you're offering the knowledge? perché invita ad una forma di conoscenza di noi stessi completamente errata, pro, superficiale e basata su e basata sul con, uh, consenso degli altri. If it frustrates you. Se ti senti frustrato per questo? If it bothers you. Se ti dà noia. If it distracts you. Se ti distrae? Then yes. Allora sì. And that is the honest answer. Because these things do exactly that. They frustrate us. You see people who commit suicide. It distracts us every day. And if you don't believe me, go for a walk on the street. Everybody is on there. <laughs> and their head is down and they're walking and they're oblivious to life. This time that you have is very limited. Even if you live for a hundred years, that's only 36,500 days. The question is, how much distraction can you allow yourself? How much? You're driving a car. And actually it's going pretty fast. Okay, for a second you could look here, to the left. Second you could look to the right. But then you got to start looking in the middle again. But if you are just looking behind you and going forward, there's going to be a catastrophe. And that's what I'm talking about. All of this, because everybody says, should you have to sacrifice this? Saying no. No. You don't have to sacrifice your family. You don't have to sacrifice your job. You don't have to sacrifice these things. And you can still have peace. Because the peace that I'm talking about is already inside of you. It's not to be created. But you, as a human being, what attention are you paying to your life? Rimanendo, diciamo, nell'attualità, nei tempi moderni, eh, caratterizzati purtroppo da questa pandemia globale, caratterizzata dai lockdown, da questa chiusura delle comunità. Si è detto in Italia, ma anche negli altri paesi, in Italia ci affacciavamo alle finestre e cantavamo l'inno nazionale tutti insieme. Si era sviluppato un senso di comunità. Insomma, si, ci ripetevamo che questo ci avrebbe cambiato ci avrebbe reso migliori. Le posso assicurare che finito il lockdown ho ritrovato, ho ritrovato le stesse frustrazioni e nervosismi, cattiverie che caratterizzano la nostra società. Non certo. Poteva essere effettivamente, al di là della retorica, una grande occasione. All I can say that there are two kinds of people. 
One who on the face of the challenge take the next step. And then there are those who on the face of the challenge retreat. Who do we, not as Italians, not as Indians, not as Americans, but human beings living on the face of this earth, who do we want to be? Do we want to be retreaters? Or even in the face of an incredible challenge, let our best come out. This is a choice we have to make. Not only because of the pandemic, but every single day. Whether the problem is family, whether the problem is with the job, the problem is with the friends, challenges are going to come. Are you going to accept the challenge and go forward? Are you going to retreat? Choice is yours. C'è una caratteristica, leggendo il libro, ascoltando i suoi discorsi, del suo messaggio. Il suo messaggio è caratterizzato da un grande entusiasmo. Che probabilmente vuole comunicare eh, per stimolare chi la segue. Lei rende questo obiettivo anche per certi versi molto vicino a noi. Prima abbiamo detto lei invita a fa far presente a tutti che c'è bisogno di un lavoro costante per arrivare. Per però allo stesso tempo fa capire che l'obiettivo è molto vicino a noi perché è dentro di noi. Le chiedo, una persona che ha avuto una vita caratterizzata da sofferenze, una persona che pensa che tutto ormai sia perduto perché gli accadimenti della vita gli hanno completamente voltato le spalle, è una persona rassegnata. Siamo in grado di superare questa rassegnazione attraverso questo percorso di pace. E, e sarebbe giustificata questa persona dal, di, dal dirle dal dirle guardi io non ce la faccio perché no, non credo più in nulla. I'd like to tell you a little story. And it's, uh, it's actually what happened. I was in South Africa. And uh, a whole bunch of people were in a hall. And we were doing question and answers. And there was a gentleman who was reading all the questions that had come. And I was answering them. All of a sudden, he read this one question. And he said, I have a letter from this lady from prison. And she has a question. And so he read the letter. And the letter said that I killed my children. I'm in jail. Is there any hope for me? Okay, just take a minute and take <laughs> the situation in. She's in prison for life. She's never going to... The only time she will come out, she will not know it. It'll be her body. She has to live every day with the fact that she killed her children. 
This is as low as you can get. And she wants to know if there is hope for her. So up till that point, I was answering the questions. I turned to the audience. I said this question. I am not going to answer. You answer. This happened a few years ago. And it was the most amazing moment. So I said, what will you tell her? Does she have hope? And they all unanimously said, yes. yes. This is the power of a human being. And we don't realize it. That we have this till sometimes we hit the bottom. Because it's oh, it'll be this way, oh, it'll be that way. And then all of a sudden there's just darkness every day. Mm. But to understand that even in that dense darkness, Inside of you, there is a lamp. And the most beautiful thing about this lamp is that it is lit. And therefore, you have light. You have hope. Even in that situation. Inside of you. E qui siamo arrivati al suo lavoro a contatto con il mondo delle carceri, con il suo programma di educazione alla pace. È entrato nelle carceri, in tantissime carceri, luoghi, luoghi infernali per sovraffollamento, condizioni igieniche. Lì si trovano coloro che sono stati giudicati dai tribunali, ma anche giudicati dalla società. Che cosa la colpisce di più della personalità di queste persone? What I saw, not in all of them, but in some of them, is a level of honesty. They really accepted that they had hit the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the bottom. And they really wanted hope in their lives. It was not a question of what are people going to think about me. It is not a question of what my future is going to be. What about my career? You know, what, what is my wife going to think? It really is a very different dynamics to crawl out of that hole where there's just no hope and to crawl, literally crawl out of this hole. This you have to watch. Because all of a sudden there is a smile on their face. And it is the most genuine smile. They are not proud of what they did. But they realized one thing. That there is goodness inside of them that they never got in touch with. There was a clarity inside of them that they never got hold of. And now they have to walk and use those resources. And that's why most of the, the inmates say 
that if I knew what I now know, I would not be here. I would have not done those things. This is so powerful, this is so good that they can recognize that. Chi si trova in carcere è stato punito per, per una scelta sbagliata. Quanto è fondamentale il tema delle scelte che si fanno nel suo programma? Nel, nel suo programma di educazione al rogo? Oh, they have to realize that they have a choice. Without knowing that they don't, if they think they don't have a choice, they are not going to come out of that hole. Because when they first go in, it's everybody else's fault why they're there, not theirs. It's the fault of the police, it's the fault of the family, it's the fault of the justice system, it's everybody else's fault except theirs. And when they look at themselves, then they realize, oh my God, I can't change the judge. I can't change the society. I can't change the police. But I can change myself. And that's the choice that you can change. Qualcuno magari accusa anche il fatto di essere stato costretto a fare queste scelte. Eh, costretto dalla povertà, dal non avere il lavoro. Alla luce di questo, secondo lei, si potrebbe ragionare rispetto alla sua filosofia, quello che da tanti anni professa e cerca di far capire anche ad un livello di sistema politico-economico che, po che possa creare il contesto per arrivare alla pace. Assolutamente. Ma dobbiamo prima capire quanto è importante peace is to our society. And then we have to also understand how important peace is to us as individuals. Both things have to be there. Because if you only think about the society, <laughs> that's, that's, the problem is over there. <laughs> And nobody understands that society is made up of us. So when you see a problem in the society, that's just a reflection of what's going on inside of you. Just. So society, but us too. And then, simple, very, very simple. If peace becomes a priority, then we begin to look at each other a little differently. Because right now, all I look at is how you are not like me. Not how you are like me. Mm. How you are not like me. And the world forces me into that. And until I can begin to see that you are like me, if I don't see it that way, how can I have true empathy towards you? Impossible. And if I cannot have empathy, how are we ever going to get along? So, fighting, 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 we know. Empathy we don't know. And without empathy, 
We cannot start doing those things that will make us stronger and our society stronger. And the problems that you are seeing in the world today are obviously signs of a weak society. Governments are weak. All the organizations that are there to help us, support us, become weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. All of a sudden, what have we got? And this pandemic shows us our strength. We have lost a lot of people. Forget about the number of how many have it. Give a thought to all those people who have died. And if we were strong, we could have avoided it. Rispetto appunto a questo tema più ampio to topic, e tornando al sistema carcere che io trovo un, un tema molto importante da affrontare to, to... perché ogni persona che entra in carcere rappresenta un frammento di un fallimento della società. Jail, uh, in Italia quando si parla di detenuti, molto spesso la gente, il popolo, diciamo, rispo risponde buttateli, buttateli in cella e buttate la chiave. Di fronte ad una situazione culturale di questo tipo, come si può far arrivare un messaggio che va nella direzione opposta come il suo? Your message goes into the opposite direction. It's very simple. È molto semplice. You have to look at yourself. Devi guardare te stesso. When you are shaving Quando ti ravi, and you cut yourself ti tagli, on the cheek, guancia, do you take your cheek and cut it out and throw it away? La guancia, la tagli via, <laughs> <laughs> if you are driving and something comes into your eye and it hurts it, do you pull your eye out and throw it? <laughs> If you are swimming and you get an ear infection, do you cut out your ear and throw it away? You're cutting vegetables and you cut your finger? Will you cut your hand off? No. Band-aid, immediately heal. <laughs> Why shouldn't that be happening with the people who have made a mistake? They have made a mistake. And we have a system. We have the criminal justice system. We have, we have a prison system. They are going to feel very unwelcomed. But if we don't do something for them so they can heal, and come back and be a productive part of the society. Then we fail as a society. Easy to say, throw it away. Would you do that to your car? <laughs> If you get a flat tire, would you throw your car away? It's no good, it doesn't drive, I throw it away. No, oh please, I need a new tire, <laughs> no problem. So, it's a double standard. You know, if your son does something that you didn't like, do you throw your son away? If your wife says to you, you're crazy, do you throw her away? No. Ha ragione. It's the same kind of thing. But in a society where there is no empathy, this is what will happen. And one day, those very people who said 
throw the key away, will find themselves behind the door. <laughs> and then it's like, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> But then it's too late. <laughs> Proviamo a vederla dalla parte delle vittime. Let's try and talk about the victims. Cioè, dalla parte di un, di un uomo, di una donna che ha perso un proprio caro a causa di un omicidio. O semplicemente che ha subito un danno economico grave da, da una truffa da un, o da un semplice ladro. Come fargli comprendere che lei sta cercando di aiutare l'uomo o la donna? che è responsabile del loro dolore, del loro cambiamento di vita. Il dottore guarda il tuo dito. Here's some medicine, I put this on, I put a band-aid on, you'll be fine. Ti do una medicina, ci metti il cerottino e sarai bene. But I see other problems. Ma vedo altri problemi. And you should do something about that. E dovresti farci qualcosa. Because if you don't take care of these problems that you have, ti occupa di questi problemi, you will become very unhealthy. Perderà davvero la salute. So you have one doctor who does that. There's another doctor who doesn't say, tell you anything about other problems. He just says, oh, I'll fix the, this thing. This is all you need. This kind of problem of where people are doing heinous things and hideous things can only be addressed before they do it. So the choice, that they have a choice, they need to be told that before, not after. See, our healing, the hospital we have created is that once you die, <laughs> We will take a look at you. <laughs> Whilst you're fine, you're walking, we don't want you in the hospital. These people do what they do. Just like you said before, because they think they don't have a choice. But they need to know they do. And the fact that maybe there are things that that are outside of their control. They are responsible for their action. Why is now important? Why is the present moment important? The reason why it is the most important because it is in the present moment called now where thought becomes action. That's right. Thought is not a big deal. Thought is reversible. But action isn't. Una volta ho ascoltato un'intervista a dalla vedova di un uomo morto in circostanze misteriose. Sa quelle morti che coinvolgono la politica, lo Stato. E quindi l'assassino non si troverà mai. Lei però a un certo punto, uscendo dal caso specifico, disse se io trovassi l'assassino di mio marito io non lo rinchiuderei in carcere. Per me le carceri non dovrebbero esistere. Perché io sogno un mondo dove le persone che commettono un errore così grave 
vengono semplicemente allontanate dalla società, respinte dal, umanamente dalla società. Lei condivide questa filosofia? I do and I don't. Mm. Because that decision is ultimately the society's decision. And the society is made up of individuals. So rather than work on society, I'm working on the individuals. I want individuals to understand the value of peace. I want the individuals to understand the value of empathy. I want individuals to judge whether they see the value of prisons or not. Because it goes one step more than this too. Definitely in countries like big rich countries it's not what crime you committed, but who committed the crime. If it's a rich person, they walk free. <laughs> a poor person, they end up in jail. Prisons are not set up to take a person who does not know about choice and train them about choice. The prisons are a good university of learning anything you didn't know about being a criminal. <laughs> you can finish your education there. <laughs> and come out a perfect criminal. <laughs> this is not what we want. No. But these are the decisions that have to be taken by the society. And the society is composed of individuals. Un'ultima domanda. Questa sua lodevole, io sinceramente la considero lodevole, propensione ad aiutare le persone che si trovano nel carcere deriva dal fatto che lei lo considera il paradigma di un suo tentativo di liberare le, per le persone che non sono in carcere ma che si sono rinchiuse ugualmente dentro una cella we are all in jail <laughs> the jails that we have created in our, in our heads. And that's why you can talk to anybody about the word freedom. And they love it. They get a smile on their face. Freedom, yes, I want it. So what imprisons them? Why, why do they like the word freedom? And there is a saying, It goes, you don't need wings to fly. All you need to do is cut off the ropes that hold you back. You will fly automatically. That's freedom. And that's what I want people to experience. This is why, I, you know, when you started with that question, yes, it's true. Only listen to me if it makes sense. <laughs> Only listen to me if it makes sense. Society makes the big decisions, always will, always has, but the society is composed of individuals, and the individuals need to be free to create a society that is also free. Grazie. Thank you. E le posso assicurare che ha avuto molto senso. Thank you. Grazie. Thank you.